have stood and talked like this before. We looked at each other in the same way then, but I can't remember where. the clothes you wore that smile you're smiling you were smiling then but I can't remember where or when some things that happened for the first time seem to be happening again So it seems that we have met before and laughed before and loved before. But who knows where or when? It seems we've stood and talked like this before we looked at each other in the same way then but I can't remember where or when those clothes you're wearing those are the clothes you wore that smile you're smiling you were smiling then but I can't remember where or when Some things that happened for the first time Seem to be happening again, again And so it seems we have met before and laughed before and loved before who knows where or when Thank you.
talked like this before We looked at each other in the same way then But I can't remember where or when The clothes you're wearing Are the clothes you wore That smile you're smiling You were smiling then but I can't remember where or when Oh, some things that happen for the first time Seem to be happening again, again And so it seems we have met before and laughed before and loved before but who knows where or when oh who knows where or when Good evening and welcome to Jazz Vespers. My name is Erin Brown and I work in cross-cultural ministry and engagement here at St. Peter's Church. If this is your first time here at St. Peter's, welcome. We're delighted to have you here um, to spend time in community and music with one another. If this is your 100th time at St. Peter's, welcome back. We're also delighted to have you here. And welcome back to our beautiful um, musicians. We're really happy that you're, you're here with us this evening. For those of you who might not have experienced a Vespers service before, uh, a Vespers service is usually something that happens in the evening as the sun is setting. The word comes from the Latin Vespere, meaning evening star. So this is a time to reflect with one another uh, about our day, what went well, what we wished maybe had gone a little differently. Um, but we have this unique and beautiful uh, tradition here at St. Peter's of doing this reflection with jazz music. And that has been part of this, um, this community since 1965. So it's been a longstanding tradition. Um, and Ella Fitzgerald quoting Martin Luther says that when you sing, you pray twice. And I think that that's something that is really beautiful here of this mixing of word and music and emotion um, into this beautiful artistic um, space. So, At the beginning of each Jazz Vespers, we will always light a candle to remind us of the divine's presence with us this night. And we always start with Vesper Psalm 141. We use its imagery to remind us of the evening coming, the sun setting, and the psalmist writes this prayer. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O oh Lord, I call to you. Come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness, but 
my eyes are turned to you. In you, I take refuge. Strip me not of my life, but let my prayer rise before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O God, and let your loving kindness descend upon us, that with purified hearts we may sing your praises with the whole church on earth and heavenly host and may glorify you forever and ever.
A reading from St. John. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one.
God in heaven, God of love, please look down and see your people through. I believe that God put sun and moon up in the sky. Just clouds passing by. God gives peace and comfort to every troubled mind. Come Sunday.
I know it wasn't planned, but that was the perfect song for what I'm <laughs> planning on speaking about this evening, um, of asking God to look down upon us and see us through. And I think that that is what we hear in St. John's Gospel. In today's reading, we hear a piece of Jesus's final prayer before he's arrested, tried, and ultimately crucified. And this Sunday, as we come to the end of the Easter season, we find ourselves moving backwards in time. This last Sunday of Easter, we don't hear the story of Jesus's resurrection. Instead, we hear one of Jesus' final prayers before death. And much of this prayer has an emphasis on unity. What does it mean to be a people unified? And I think that Jesus' prayers petitioning for the unity of people was prophetic. It's no secret that unity is not something that comes easily to the larger church today. There's a long history of schism between Western Orthodox and Roman Catholic churches, and later on with the Reformation in Europe in the 1500s. But beyond just the larger church, humanity struggles to stay unified, connected to one another. Borders of all kinds intellectual, political, geographic, racial, religious, separate us from one another, from seeing and listening to each other. The challenge to live in unity is a great one. When I first started at St. Peter's last year, the first time I gave a reflection was on Reconciliation and Reformation Sunday. And that's a Sunday that has often marked division within the larger Christian community. But over time, there's been this shift in reflection on that day. It's not simply a day to think about original divisions or disagreements, but a day to think about how we are able to meet one another again. How we are able to stand together in unity. And throughout these reflections, there's been a greater understanding behind the truth of unity. And that unity doesn't mean uniformity. In the prayers within today's reading, Jesus isn't praying for everyone to be the same. The truth behind unity is diversity. Unity is diversity. 
But so often it can mean and be easy to misinterpret uniformity as the truth behind unity. Because it means we can remain in what's comfortable to us. The beginning stages of uniformity make us feel like everything's under control. Everything's in order, we know what's going on, and expect to understand how events in our life will play out. But as the desire for uniformity continues to grow, we can start to see the truth behind it and that it isn't unifying, but divisive. Because as the desire for uniformity continues to grow, so does anxiety. We want other people to think like, think like us and act like us. And when they do not, our anxiety and our stress rise. And when we reach a certain level of stress, our brain tells us we are in danger. And we get the fight or flight response that kicks in. So what do we do? We separate ourselves from other people. We start putting up walls. We start thinking in a binary and pit one another against each other. The desire for uniformity only causes a starker division. We see this today in the world we live in, and we can see it throughout Jesus' life as he carried out his ministry. And Jesus' words and actions consistently challenged the status quo of his time. And as the news of his radical work continued to spread, people's frustration and anxiety started to rise. And throughout scriptures, people react to his work in all sorts of ways, trying to stone him, accusing him of being a demon, and ultimately crucifying him. The desire for uniformity led to violence in both words and actions. And it's something that continues now. The desire for uniformity and the anxiety that rises when we don't achieve it is visible. We see it in the news. We see it in our city. We see it in our neighborhoods. How do we work as a community to address the division and instead of raising more walls, work together and build bridges? What does unity mean for us? I can't give a definitive answer. I can't say that I know how that can happen in every context in which each and every one of us live. But I do think that within each of these contexts, one of the important pieces in finding a meeting place is the presence of grace, and a grace to be different together. Grace as we bring all of who we are, our gifts, our talents, strengths, and growing edges, anxieties, and sorrows. And it's a beautiful word, but it's not something that comes easily. And it isn't something that just fixes everything as soon as you say it. It takes work and patience and intentionality. But when Jesus prays in today's reading, he prays from his experience as a human, knowing how difficult it is to remain unified. His prayer invites us to continue to abide, to live in, to stay, and to be in relationship 
with community in all its beauty and in all of its messiness. Not to divide, but to connect and genuinely learn with and from one another. And we won't always get it right and we won't be perfect. But that's not what's asked of us. We're called to love one another and walk beside one another in reconciliation, in unity, with grace. Please pray with me. Holy One, who created humanity in your image. Make us grateful for the companionship of other people, receiving them as gifts of your grace. Shape us into companions for all who yearn for community. Endow us with patience to search for your wisdom. Teach us to speak the truth in a spirit of love. Free us from fear to learn from one another. Give us your grace to be different together. Show us your steadfast love to those suffering in isolation. Break the chains of all held fast by systemic oppression of any kind. Comfort all who are afraid or suffering from illness. Empower your people to speak and act with fire from your spirit. Be the words that come from the mouths of activists and organizers, teachers, all in leadership, to speak a message of peace and justice. We remember all of our beloved dead who have given us glimpses of your redeeming love. Unite our voices with theirs, that all of our songs may be in harmony together. Into your hands, Holy One, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast love. Amen.
took the lid off a jar. And everything that had been stored therein leapt out and started flying all around. I picked up a rock, and the quiet creatures living underneath scattered and scrambled every which way. The wind blew hard, and leaves, rocks, dirt, and sticks whirled freely through the air. All the creatures, the creepers and the crawlers, the flyers and the buzzers, all the thoughts and the never says, all the world's concealed things found their freedoms. Wings spread, throats open, blood coursing strong and full. I opened my mouth and started to speak. Sure, when it's autumn, 
wind always wants to creep up and haunt you Whistling it's got you With it's heartache, with it's sorrow Winter wind sings and it cries Spring and summer every other day corn, the bales of hay, through the sudden clouds and the dust, spring and summer. That's Andrea Wolper on vocals. Ken Filiano on bass. And Michael Howell on guitar. Thank you all for being here. My name is James Boudreau. I'm the Director of Programming here at St. Peter's Church, and I'm thrilled to see you all here. Thank you to everyone who's joining us on our live stream. Um, yeah, it's a really, um, it's a really wonderful um, group that we have here tonight, and I want to thank, uh, thank you, Andrea, for um, organizing this uh, great set of music. Um, if you if you uh, came in through the downstairs doors, you might not have noticed upstairs we have a wonderful photography exhibit called Afrofuturism and Jazz. That's only up for four more days. So if you haven't had a chance to take a look at it, um, please do. Um, after Vespers, you just head up the stairs up there and take a look at some of the uh, great musicians of our time are um, in portraits there and uh, by Robert Sutherland Cohen, who is here tonight, Robert is there in the back uh, taking pictures tonight. Yeah, it's really a beautiful exhibit. We've been very lucky to have it up here for a few months, and I'll be sorry to see it go in a few days, but we will have uh, more art coming up in the next um, couple of weeks. And uh, Jazz Vespers is here every Sunday at 5, so if you are in the area, uh, please come again. You can always uh, watch the live stream on our website or YouTube or um, Facebook channels. And if you like what we're doing here at St. Peter's with Jazz, Jazz Vespers, we've been doing this since 1965, um, please consider making a gift to support the church. We can only do it with your support. We hope to do it for many years to come. And uh, the last thing I wanted to say is that we have a guest book in the back, and if you'd like to, on your way out, uh, please leave your name and a note if you're so inclined. Um, we've had visitors from all over the world here at Jazz Vespers just even in the last few months. And we do love to see um, where you're from. And it's just um, wonderful for us to realize that it's a world community that we have here. Um, it's one of the lucky things about being based in New York City. So uh, thanks again. We have one more piece of music tonight, and then uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you. We are so happy to be here again. I love playing the Jazz Vespers service. As was said earlier, since I have not been playing this since 1965, but 
<laughs> it's been happening since 1965. And we're going to close with a song by uh, the great Cannonball Adderley with lyrics by John Hendricks and new additional lyrics by Kathy Siegel Garcia. I heard me a sermon and have you heard it yet? With that soulful message that you won't soon forget Talks about real true love People lost sight of with their sinful living And scorn in heaven above Tells you to love one another Listen, sisters and brothers you so and so to have no regrets and to find what you're missing by your head and listen to that sermon next you feel for each other it has a goal and a purpose and the power to heal the world and if you go on ahead and you act on that power spread the love to your brothers the love to your sisters you're gonna feel that love surround you and live in peace and happiness the holy you're gonna feel all
all its power when you heed my simple ramblings regarding this sermonette. Yes, thank you so much to our wonderful musicians for being with us this evening. Absolutely beautiful, thank you. And thank you all for joining us this evening. I hope that you enjoyed this night of community and music um, as much as I have. Um, wherever you may go after this, if New York is home for you, uh, may you have a safe journey back. If you're just visiting, um, safe travels to wherever you are headed. And may the God that unifies us with everlasting love continue to be with you. Have a good night, everyone.